let's cover on graphing. So first thing, if we were going to go ahead and graph this, I think finding the x and y intercepts would be rather pretty important, right? So we can say the x intercepts, y is equal to 0, so we set them out. Now, I'm not going to waste your time by doing um, each one of these, because hopefully you guys noticed that you can use the zero product property to set each one of these equal to zero, right? And it doesn't matter when you do the zero product property. You're going to undo the cubing by cube root. You're going to undo the square by square root. But each and every time, once you do all that math, you're still going to have each one of these factors set equal to zero, correct? So we can kind of like skip those steps and just say our x-intercepts, which in this case are going to be my real zeros, are going to occur at x equals 1, negative 2, 3, and negative 4. Do you guys agree? Yes. Yeah. Right? OK. If I want to find the y-intercept, now that's not as much fun, because now I'm replacing x equal to 0. And I have to do some math. And I remember when I did this, I had to use a calculator. But I forgot my calculator. So I know it's 1,728. That sounds right. Sounds about right. So therefore, that's a y coordinate at um, 0, 1,728. OK. Now, just knowing when the graph crosses, just knowing where the graph looks is helpful. But remember, guys, we talked about some other things. We talked about multiplicity, and we talked about end behavior. And knowing all of those is what's going to be important for us to graph. So we know the graph crosses at 1, bless you, crosses at negative 2, crosses at positive 3, and negative 4. So I have my x-intercepts. My y-intercept, I'm going to have to just you know, rough sketch this scale here. OK? So the main idea is I just want a sketch of the behavior of what this graph looks like. OK? Um, all right, now we got to look at, well, again, my, what we noticed is the power that a factor is raised to affects the graph cross or um, bounce. So we look at 1, and we can see that it has a multiplicity of 3. So we'd say multiplicity is equal to 3, which is odd. So therefore, at 1, we know the graph crosses. Here we look at my 0 of negative 2 has a multiplicity of 2. So therefore, we know since the multiplicity is even, it's going to bounce. Do we know if it bounces up or bounces down? No. So why don't we just do bounce either way for right now? Then we have 3, which has an odd multiplicity of 3. I didn't mean for those to be the same, but it just worked out that way. So therefore, at 3, it's going to cross. And then at negative 4, we have a multiplicity equal to 2. So therefore, it bounces, um, negative 4. So it bounces either up or down. OK, so now what we need to do is we need to determine this end behavior. We've got to figure out, how does this graph look? Because um, you know, we're, we're not now obviously having the y-intercept is helpful for us, but we could go and mark. Um, but if we didn't have the y-intercept or whatever else, we can still, knowing this end behavior is going to help us do that. So again, what I showed you guys is if you were to expand these, just look at the highest term. So if I expanded x minus 3 cubed, I would get x cubed. If I expanded x plus 2 squared, I would get x squared. And again, we don't care about everything else. We just care about the leading term. x minus 3 cubed would be another x cubed. And x plus 4 squared would just be an x squared. Okay, And when we multiply all of those out together, the largest term that we're going to get is x to the 10th yeah. power. Now that we know that my power is even and the coefficient is positive, can we determine what the end behavior is? It's the same. Here, guys, here's the same thing. This has the same end behavior as x squared. Do you know what that graph looks like? Can you determine what the end behavior is? Rise left, rise right. It's the same with this. Even and then positive. So just make sure you know the basic graphs and then relate it to what's the same. Um, so therefore, my graph rises to the left and rises to the right. OK? Now, um, now we can just connect. And you guys can see this bounces, bounces, goes through my y-intercept, crosses, and then crosses. So the graph looks something like that. Yes? Could we just use the y-intercept to find out? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, this graph, you could have like identified like the y-intercept like that helped it out. But I wanted you guys to understand how to use the end behavior like as well, because what if like the math to find the y-intercept was like, what if this was instead of like, what if this was like to the like 13th power and 22nd, like it might be something too crazy that you wouldn't know, so you'd want to know how to do at least use the end behavior. So that's, what I, that's why I was, but yeah, you, you'd have enough information there not to have to use end behavior, right? Um, but there you go, that's what the graph looks like, or at least a rough sketch of the graph. And um, the other thing I want to point out to you guys real quick is 